Hello and welcome to the news from Borean International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa received at Safiya Palace Borean's ambassador to Egypt, Hisham Mohammed al joida who swore an oath in front of His Majesty for appointing him as ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary. His Majesty also received Bahrain's ambassador to Italy, Dr. Nasser Mohammed Yosef Abulushi, and Bahrain's ambassador to Kuwait, Asala Ali Hassan Amalki, on the occasion of their new appointments. His Majesty congratulated them on their new positions and wished them success in performing their diplomatic and national duties. His Majesty requested them to convey his greetings to the leaders of their assigned countries and his wishes of further progress and prosperity to their countries and people. His Majesty stressed the importance of bolstering relations with friendly and brotherly countries and praised the role of Bahraini ambassadors in enhancing joint coordination with various countries. The ambassadors expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, expressing pride in his royal trust and affirming that its directives will motivate them to exert more efforts. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the German ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Kai Buchmann, at the Safriya Palace. His Majesty welcomed the ambassador and praised the deep rooted bilateral relations. His Majesty thanked the ambassador's efforts in developing the bilateral relations and services of the two countries and their peoples. For his part, the ambassador gifted a book to His Majesty the King on Arabian horses and conveyed thanks and appreciation from the President of the World Arabian Horse Organization, George Olmes, for His Majesty's efforts in supporting efforts to preserve Arabian horses. His Majesty thanked the ambassador for the commemorative gift and praised the effort that went into preparing its material. His Majesty added that publishing the book affirms Germany's keen interest in Arabian horses. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's keenness on preserving Bahraini Arabian horses, which is distinguished by their beauty and quality, and which represent a part of the country's identity and heritage. For his part, the German ambassador praised Bahrain's keen interest in this field, thanks to the royal directors of His Majesty the King. He affirmed that Bahrain is among the most important countries in this field. He expressed thanks and appreciation for His Majesty's constant support of the bilateral relations and the warm welcome Germans receive upon visiting the Kingdom. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting today at Debia Palace. Following the session, the Cabinet Secretary General, Dr. Yasbin Isa Al Nasser, gave the following statement. The cabinet hailed the speech of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of the National Day celebrations, the establishment of the modern Bahraini state as an Arab and Muslim country, founded by Ahmed Al Fatah in 1783 the anniversary of his full membership in the United Nations and the anniversary of His Majesty's accession to the throne. The meeting expressed thanks and appreciation to all the citizens, friendly countries, residents, governmental and private institutions and bodies for participating in the celebrations on the national occasion. The session welcomed the results of the visit of the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, upon the invitation of His Majesty and affirmed the importance of the discussions with the Prime Minister held with His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, as well as the MOU signed to enhance bilateral relations and a partnership which reflects the aspirations of the two countries and people. The Cabinet also welcomed the results of the 40th GCC Summit held in Riyadh, chaired by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, where His Majesty the King headed Bahrain's delegation. It hailed the summit's closing statement, which affirmed the importance of the GCC's unity and enhancing joint Gulf action, as well as its stances towards the most important regional and international issues, which stresses the importance of unity in facing challenges that guarantees the safety of its lands and regional waters. The Cabinet then made the following decisions. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince directed the Cabinet to establish a coordination mechanism between various parties in the event that Labour-related issue could not be settled. 
His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Justice and Islamic Affairs and the Ministry of Labour and Social Development to coordinate it by submitting periodical reports to measure the performance of this mechanism while affirming the protection of the employees and the employers. The Cabinet also approved a draft law to reorganise disputes between employers and employees. The Cabinet discussed a draft law on the media and the press to review its compatibility with Bahrain's commitments to various international obligations. The Cabinet approved Bahrain's participation in the Human Capital Project by the World Bank, which produces rankings each year and which ranked Bahrain as the top country in that field for the year 2018 and 47th internationally. The Cabinet reviewed the most prominent achievements of the Residential Projects Programme, which succeeded in helping productive families register and operate its businesses, and has therefore increased the issuance of licences for families to operate in this manner. The Cabinet approved ongoing support for this programme. The Cabinet reviewed a draft law on changing Law 15 of 2017 on classifying narcotics to include new articles that add more substances to the second and third categories. It was referred to a committee for further review. The Cabinet reviewed a report by the Minister of Education on the outcomes of the 40th UNESCO meeting in Paris, a report by the Minister of Transportation and Tele Telecommunications in Saudi Arabia, as well as a report by the Minister of Youth and Sports on the third edition of the World Conference in Youth in Egypt. The Badea Farmers Market is an event that over the past eight years has brought together different communities from food enthusiasts to chefs. Even people from different countries cherish the annual event because it provides some of the vegetables and fruit that are usually only grown in their hometowns. More in this report by Sarah Abrek. Bahrain Farmers Market Budaya opens every Saturday from December until April with an average of 30 plus vendors selling only products they grew or produced on Bahraini lands and with strict safety standards for the end consumer. The main goal that we are seeking is to encourage the Bahraini farmers and to market their products. Uh, today we have seen uh, the uh, variety of, uh, of their product in different uh, vegetables, fruits, uh, uh, this year edition uh, and uh, uh, we've seen the dates uh, corner uh, and uh, we also we are so excited to see that the, the dates uh, corner had revealed that there are a number of companies that had been established and they are marketing their products locally and internationally and Gulf Oise. This includes a variety of produce meats, cheese, plants, honey, baked goods, packaged foods, as well as fresh cut flowers and handcrafted items. All the products sold are grown or made on the island. The ministry has organized a continuous developmental program for the farmers to maximize their production as well as optimize it. Bahrain has a rich history in agriculture and a rich history of uh, a friendly people that is always welcoming and opening to all communities from across the world. And the farmer's market is a microcosm of that. You come here and you really get to see all cultures, all aspects, all different groups of people visiting the farmer's market and seeing all the different products that are available. Peninsula Farms is producing from fresh vegetables, goat's uh, milk and cheese, um, as well as goat's milk soap that we produce from the milk. All these products are just to showcase what we can do to support um, our, our uh, economy and our people here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Sarah Lebrek. Bahrain's capital city, Manama, has been named the capital of Arab tourism for 2020 by Arab tourism ministers during the 22nd session of the Arab Ministerial Council for Tourism, hosted by the Saudi city of Al-Assa in the capital of Arab tourism for 2019. Industry and Commerce Tourism Minister and Board of Directors Chairman of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, BTAA, Zayed bin Rashid Al Ziyani, led the Kingdom's delegation to the meeting. The participation comes as a result of the selection of Bahrain as part of the Executive Office of the Arab Ministerial Council for Tourism for the years 2018 to 2019, which is made up of eight Arab countries. A delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain participated in the 25th session of the Executive Office of the Arab Ministerial Council for Tourism, which was hosted in Al Assa and named Capital of Arab Tourism for 2019. The session was held in the Saudi Arabia on the sidelines of the 22nd session of the Arab Ministerial Council for Tourism. 
The delegation was headed by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and Chairman of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, BTEA, Zaid bin Rashid Al Zayani. The Chief Executive Officer of BTEA, Nada Al Mayayed, and the Acting Director of Marketing and Tourism Promotion Directorate at BTEA, Dr. Ali Filath. The Council, which consists of eight Arab countries, elected Bahrain as a member of its executive office for a period of two years, 2018 to 2019. Commenting on the occasion, Al Zayani expressed pride in taking part in these meetings, which come as part of Bahrain's role as an active member of the executive office for a period of two years, 2018 to 2019. He added that the meeting discussed the opportunities and challenges of the tourism sector in the Arab region and identified areas of cooperation between countries in the region and shares experiences in the field of tourism. The CEO of BTEA asserted the Kingdom's efforts to activate the Tourism Information and Statistics Hub in order to support the Arab tourism strategy, noting that the BTEA has developed an integrated strategy aimed at elevating Bahrain's tourism industry by attracting investors and creating a suitable environment where tourism projects can thrive. The Director of Information Department at the Court of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Ibrahim al Talmami initiated the Arab Conference on Public Administration Governance hosted by the Arab Administration Development Organization in cooperation with the Institute of Public Administration in Oman. Al-Tamimi delivered a presentation on the administrative initiatives in the government of Bahrain, including the ones supervised by the Court of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to develop the government. Tamkeen held its yearly consultation forum 2019 which aims to highlight the accomplishments of Tamkeen this year. More in this report with Miriam Albayati. Tamkeen held its annual consultation forum 2019, which discusses Tamkeen's timeline and its achievements during the year. His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa, Tamkeen Chairman, delivers a speech that highlights Tamkeen's achievements during 2019, followed by another speech by Khaled Al Alawi, Tamkeen's Entrepreneurship Support Manager, that explains the role of Tamkeen and how it expanded throughout the years. Uh, the consultation forum, obviously, part of it is going through whatever we've done for the past year, showing what we've achieved, and also uh, collecting feedback about how uh, about our programs and how we can improve them going forward. Um, obviously, this is our last. This is the last year for the current strategy cycle. Um, we are for next. We are working on a new strategy cycle as well. So this year in particular is going to be very important because this is not go only going to be. Um, influencing our programs for the next year, but also shaping our strategy and what's going to look like from 2021 going forward. Temkin has done a lot of things this past year to uh, revamp its programs and activities to be more in line with what's required. Again, where we've we've conducted a series of, of sector advisory consultations with the private sector throughout the year to further refine our schemes to make sure that they are uh, meeting the, the immediate needs of the private sector. The economy is going through a lot of changes right now. There's a lot of um, uh, demands on the private sector. And so what we're trying to do as a country is making sure that our support solutions are very much fit in line with, with what, what the business needs on the ground are. Temkin has two primary objectives. First, to foster the development and growth of enterprises. And second, to provide the support to enhance the productivity and training of the national workforce. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Maryam al -Bayati. The King of Bahrain's Embassy in Egypt held a celebration on the occasion of Bahrain's National Day. The event was attended by the Assistant Secretary General of the Arab League, Ambassador Hossam Zaki, and a number of ministers and senior officials. The audience praised the relations between Bahrain and Egypt and expressed good wishes to the Kingdom of Bahrain and further progress and prosperity to its people under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa.